Well, hello there, agency owners. It's Charlie here once again, the host of the Agency Valley podcast. And I just finished recording an episode of this podcast with Sayan Sakar. Now, <clears throat> what is fascinating about Sayan is he's gone super deep in the space of e-commerce and health uh, or supplements. Now, when I say super deep, he's responsible for a few seven and eight figure brands in this space. But what makes him so unique and so interesting is he's doing the opposite to what most people are doing in this space. Now, I don't want to give away too much into the episode, but I really think if you're at all playing in e-commerce that you should be paying attention to what Sayan says you should be paying attention to, particularly with offline focuses and affiliate focuses over things like Facebook ads, which he seems to believe are incredibly difficult, especially in the health space with things like approvals and so on. So I really want you to come and dig into this episode. He offers a lot of different views that I think you just won't find by most people. And of course, if you do like the show, please make sure to like and subscribe and share with the other agency owners that are out there. All right, well, that's enough for me. Let's get into this episode. And I'm sure you're really going to enjoy this one. Over to Sian. Hello, agency owners. It's Charlie here, the host of the Agency Valley podcast. And today I'm bringing you guys something a little bit different, something I think you'll all get a lot of value from. I'm joined by Seon Saka, who has some amazing experience in e commerce and health related e commerce specifically. How are you doing, Seon? Hey, Charlie. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Yeah, I think it's, um, I'm a bit excited. You may have guessed because, like, <laughs> One of the things I love the most about podcasting is I get to meet people who have put a lot of focus and put a lot of attention into a certain area that I would say I'm not that skilled at. And you are definitely one of those people. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, I feel like definitely, uh, and of course, we'll talk more about this, but just the focus that we've been able to do in our agency to really hone in on our ideal customer has been huge. And not everyone's doing that. So yeah, looking forward to talking more about how that's helpful for me and how I help a lot of you guys and, and your listeners. Yeah, definitely. So you were actually introduced to me by um, someone who I consider a very, very smart person, Esther Kiss of Born to Influence. Shout out to Esther. Um, yeah. Now, normally, like I'll, I'll put it this way. I think you're actually in one of the most competitive spaces on the internet. Right, health supplements in it the income space. There, yep. <laughs> yeah, like it's it's crazy. And like in all honesty, this is an area. If something came across my desk here, I would avoid. I would be like, no, nah, not touching this, <laughs> um, because I see the competition and I see how this has really evolved over the years of the internet. And um, what I really want to do is like, number one, I want to ask, how did you end up in this space, um, and what drew you to it? And we'll start from there and tell us a little bit about what you're doing in this space. Yeah. So just like kind of my background briefly, how I got into it is, um, you know, I've been in the industry for about eight years now. Um, I first got in because um, I used to be very overweight. I mean, basically obese and I lost a lot of weight and I lost weight because I spent um, a massive amount of time like learning everything I could about diet, exercise and supplements. And during that process of losing weight, I obviously dieted and worked out, but I also took like <laughs> probably 50 or not, not took, but I tried like 50 different products between herbs and, and, and full formulas and so on and so forth. And I just learned so much about it. So then shortly after that, I did lose weight. Um, I got in really great shape and I decided I wanted to do my own business. Um, and I realized like if there's one thing I know a ton about, it's health and health supplements. Um, so that's what I chose to really go go in on. Yeah, that's great. I, I really love, I, I call it proof in the pudding stories. It's like, mm -hmm. I think the best businesses come from a challenge we've had, like, because we understand the challenge um, so much better than someone who hasn't. I think that really shows yeah. in a lot of businesses. And I actually looked on the uh, Invigorate Now website and you've got a beautiful story written up on the um, our story page, uh, conveniently oh, named for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
but the story and copy you've put into that page is fantastic. It was very well written. Yeah, I, and I mean that's definitely one of the the bigger secrets to uh, my success for myself and our clients is like it's a lot about copy and being able to properly communicate the message in a way that makes you know the reader or listener um, understand that this is a fit for them and that they should take action and move forward. So yeah, that, there's definitely parts of that in that story. So I mean, yes, it is a story, but um, I won't lie and say that it. It you know it has been crafted in a way that's meant to really make you connect, um, because if you can't do that, you can't really be successful in reaching your customers and scaling your business and helping them and so on. So, yeah, yeah. definitely. So, what are you doing in the space now? Um, I'm actually, which is probably crazy. Um, I am, I basically own and oversee four businesses: two that I own outright, two that I'm partnered in. Um, and then that's like what we have as the businesses themselves. And then I have um, this program where it's kind of an agency, kind of a cons- consultancy where we work with other health e-com companies. Um, and basically I tell them, you know, or well, A, I show them the process of what to do in a business, how to scale uh, from zero to six figures and beyond. But also I'm like going in their business in a sense, helping them with their copy, helping them with their messaging, all that stuff to really make sure that they can follow a process that we have really fine tuned and that we know works. Um, so basically it's, it's kind of twofold. It's like my own stuff and also helping clients um, implement that into their business. I think that's fantastic. And I really think a lot of agency owners could learn from what you just said. Um, one of the things I think you've nailed particularly well is that like, you know how to stick your lane, like you've identified where you're strong, you've got a great niche and experience, and then you're just looking to repeat that essentially. It's not like going, hey, I'm going to start a coffee shop. That's going to be my next thing. <laughs> exactly. You, you know, this actually it came to mind the other day because um, I hadn't realized this, this until recently, but I learned this from Jay Abraham a while ago. So, I, like, I was reading one of his books, and um, and for those of you listening who have not read Jay Abraham, you definitely should. He's probably one of the smartest marketing minds alive. And he told a story about how um, – I forget what kind of company it was, but one of his clients, you know, they they were doing like maybe 100K a month. It was some kind of like, you know, I want to say it was like tree removal or something to do with like a forest or whatever. Just some kind of like um, company where where, where they performed a service, like a manual labor service. Um, But then he advised this company to take their process of getting clients for that business and, and servicing those clients and so on. And turning that into a separate kind of licensing program and licensing that program to other, um, you know, forest or, or tree cutting providers. And that idea helped this client add 200K a month to his business. Um, and like, that's not what, I, what, that's not what, what was in mind when I started my consulting stuff, but it came to mind that that's what I was doing, right? I was taking the expertise I already had in one place. Um, I was doing well there and I added a whole new layer by taking that advice, wrapping it up into this kind of, you know, a uh, program slash coaching, and then selling that to other companies who are trying to do what I've done. Um, so I'm not sure if I got kind of deep, but it's kind of like building a layer of an extra service on top of what, what you already know. Yeah, definitely. And I love the leverage. It's all about leverage. Um, yeah. is the game now. Look, I reckon this was the biggest mistake I made in my first agency was that we were just trying to do too many different things, you know, because this applies mm-hmm. in many levels. And I think about it and go, if we did just stuck to one niche, if we did stuck to like at the time we were doing like a lot of, let's say, uh, funnels for services businesses like chiropractors and physios, if we did just stuck to that, we probably would have grown so much more quickly. It was us trying to service anyone and everyone that prevented right, us right. from developing those leverageable systems or being able to go, hey, we're really good at, in your example, the tree business. Um, let's license what we're, we're great at. And I'm a big fan of Jay as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. So, I've got some specific questions here I'm dying to know your views on. Um, for, as an outsider of this industry of uh, health and e-com, mm-hmm. I'll start with the one that is probably the most, um, I think you probably get this one a lot, but how do you feel about Amazon in the e-commerce industry? I think people make a mistake in that they believe that 
Amazon can be the key to their success. I mean, yes, there are people doing well on Amazon, but Amazon is not a long-term solution um, because they, like, you don't own, um, you don't really own the business. Like, yes, you do in a sense, but I've had personal friends who have been doing six, seven figures a month on Amazon and supplements and been shut down overnight. And that's what happens when you have a platform, when you have a business on someone else's platform. So, I mean, yes, it's good for, for customers because they trust it and they want to be there. But for you as a business owner, I don't see it as a good long-term solution. It's funny you said that. I have I actually know someone who's had the same experience. It was like, you know, overnight hero to zero. It's like the reverse mm-hmm. story is like they were killing it. And then due to, I can't remember what exactly happened in their case, but they basically got shut down um, and the business was over overnight. Yeah, exactly. And, and the worst thing is, so look, like in my businesses and, and anyone else who has their own platform, like even if something like this happens where like say you're running ads on like Facebook or whatever and, and you get shut down, you still have the list of customers and you can email them, you can direct mail them, you can still reach out to them and make more sales. You can't do that on Amazon because you have no actual access to the customer data. Like you have some information, but it's mostly handled and owned through Amazon. So if you are shut down there, you are done. Yeah, I, I kind of like, we've reached a point now, it's like if I got, let's say, and it doesn't happen really these days, but if a Facebook account got shut down or an ads account, I don't know, I've kind of got the attitude is like, right, we'll just do Google. Like, we'll just go AdWords and uh, YouTube, no biggie. Yep. But um, with yeah, Amazon exactly that. stated, you're, you're under. Okay, well, I think that's an important perspective for anyone in e-commerce, just the, um, how I suppose the danger of Amazon. I'm sure it could be amazing and I know a lot of people doing well there, but I certainly wouldn't like that huge amount of risk in only doing it. Yeah, exactly. So the next side of it is, you know, being that the case, what platform do you, I'll say, because obviously this is going to be an opinion, so I'll state that here, but what, what platform do you like for hosting yourself then? So are you a Shopify guy? Do you prefer WordPress or Magento or any of those? So we actually are mixed in that half of our sites are custom coded um, and the other half are on ClickFunnels. So basically, and what we show our clients actually is to use ClickFunnels because ClickFunnels is way easier. I mean, similar to Shopify and WordPress, it's much easier to get a site up and running um, using a platform like that versus what we have done over time, which is, you know, we, we have had our dev guy custom code a site from scratch. So, um, yeah, so, so basically if you're kind of new or, or even if you're, you know, doing, you know, below six figures, I would at least... Um, look towards ClickFunnels. That's the one I recommend. But I know other guys who are using Shopify um, and other platforms and still doing well. How interesting. I didn't expect that answer at all. Um, fascinating. And I, I'm a big fan of ClickFunnels, but I've, I don't particularly use it for e-commerce. Um, and I'm a big fan of Russ as well. I think that he's done some amazing things there. But it's a brilliant tool. And I think what you just highlighted in the idea of like the convenience how quick it yeah. is to move. Yeah, it makes it so easy. Like, um, like I guess I'm having an exact time frame, but but like I'm pretty sure that if if it was just me myself, right, like going in to make a new funnel, if I really focused on it and just like got it done, it could be done in like less than six hours. I mean, that's not including the copy. The copy is different, but the funnel itself, like building an entire funnel with all the steps, including two upsells, two downsells, thank you pages, all those things involved, um, you know, basically in less than a day. Um, and that can be said about most other, um, you know, website platforms as far as I know. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, look, even the best Shopify devs aren't putting sites up in that time frame. Like, yeah, exactly. um, I think there's a bit more work in it where I, I do believe it's completely feasible with ClickFunnels. So I can understand that point of view. All right, so we've got the platform covered here. Um, and I think that's really interesting because if you're an agency and you ha- think that, um, I suppose, we've got to build a, a whole site out before we can start working with someone or start selling something, and you kind of have just opened that up there and gone, well, actually, started on ClickFunnels, um, that's going to be a huge speed improvement to delivery times. So that's a huge win. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, by, by far, yeah. And, and, and people also... Um, People think for some reason that like these kind of um, done for you platforms like ClickFunnels or Shopify or whatever, that they're not as good as like kind of going the hard route and having someone custom code it. 
but like you know at, like as mentioned we have some custom code and, and some not and like there's no difference in like how well they work you know like it comes down to other things like copy in your product versus like how well the web design is done at least in my experience well the only red flag i can think of is seo that's the only thing that comes up that if your marketing well, channel sure. is seo you may want to go the website route but being that you would want you've probably already been in it for a while or have something in place for that but that actually segues perfectly into my next question is what's your favorite marketing channel where do you like to look these days so we have a few right so we actually do a lot of stuff offline so offline is part of it offline being newspapers and radio um, and online primarily affiliates and email buys um, so we do some stuff on facebook for health in terms of retargeting but we're not really doing a lot of front end advertising um, what we found at least in the markets we are in in supplements it's hard to get approved and scale on facebook um, because facebook is not really a fan of most types of supplements um, so yeah we tend to go towards affiliates and email as our main channels at least on the online side how interesting another answer that i just did not expect <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is I, great this is this is interesting because this is why <laughs> i love to bring people on the show uh like you is that you know for most people right for most okay if i brought 99 other people on this show so we had 100 in total i would expect that over 80 percent would just said shopify and facebook ads yeah. as those two answers and you've said the complete opposite it couldn't get more opposite can you dive yeah. a little bit deeper into i suppose how you decided to go after these channels and then if there's any like specifics or things you would kind of recommend or or look at within them yeah i mean in terms of deciding i think it's kind of experience of where we learned over time like the like the work and stress involved in trying to get as approved on Facebook for health supplements is like not worth it compared to making a really good offer and pushing it to email, uh, email affiliates who have a ton of volume, like guys who can send you um, multiple thousands of clicks and dollars uh, in one email on one day. Like that kind of traffic is hard to find, um, but when you find it and when you know really how to work in that type of marketing, um, it's very, very scalable. Um, and it's much easier because you don't have, you know, Facebook um, breathing down your neck on every last thing you say. Like, for example, like, and for anyone who advertises on Facebook, like, you can't really say the word you in your Facebook ads. And like, the FTC wouldn't care about that because it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with saying the word you in an ad, but Facebook does. And like, that kind of stuff is ridiculous. It makes life so hard. <laughs> so, um, it's, it's kind like of crazy. looking at the risk and realizing why spend so much energy there if you can have the same results which, with much less stress and work um, through another method. That is um, a very interesting observation. Um, and I tend to agree. Like I am actually a PPC guy. I've done a lot in Facebook ads and Google ads over the years. Um, and I actually think like the Facebook thing's gotten out of control. Um, I, I understand their point of view and reasoning, so don't get me wrong. But as you just stated, the idea that you can't use the word you or you can't use a before and after image is, um, I think, it, it's gone to this whole level of extreme. Mm -hmm. and, exactly. I, 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 and I mean, even on websites and stuff, is they're getting very clever where even if you have before and after pictures on your website, is that they're kind of getting, I suppose, crazier and crazier on what they will and won't allow. So do you yeah, use a marketplace exactly. for affiliates or are you reaching out to find affiliates uh, online or how are you discerning where to get your affiliates or what newspapers you want to go after, for instance, or magazines? Yeah, yeah so, so on the affiliate side, there, there are two steps, right? Uh, one step is basically people that um, I've met over the years, whether it's uh, through mutual friends or primarily through different events. Um, so like, tea, like traffic and conversion, affiliate summit east and west these kinds of events where you have these big affiliates who, um, who have built large email lists over time. Um, so I've, I've either met them in person or been introduced to them. And like that, I'm not gonna lie, like unless you have a way in, in terms of like a mutual friend, it's not an easy process. It's definitely doable, but it takes some time. Um, but one thing I'll say to make it easier is that 
we found that a lot of our best affiliates are guys who already have offers of their own that are working well on a marketplace like ClickBank. So for example, um, maybe somebody has a weight loss ebook or like a diabetes ebook or whatever it is. So they have their own book offer. Um, they're selling it on ClickBank so you can see who they are, what their product is, how well they're doing. Um, and basically what happens is they bought, you know, they have customers who buy their books and over time, because of those buyers, the email list grows substantially. So you have guys with very big email lists who are then promoting um, other relevant offers to their list um, either every day or a few times a week. Um, so kind of going to that marketplace, figuring out who is a good fit for your type of product, um, and then finding a way to you know connect with them, reach out to them, maybe help them first, and so on until they agree to promote your product. Um, oh, okay. And that's step one. Step two, which is actually easier, um, but a lot of people don't want to do it because it requires basically a bit of, of an upfront spend, is um, finding affiliate networks. So there are some big email affiliate networks and also affiliate networks, networks in general where they have access to all these affiliates who kind of look for offers that are put on their network. Um, and if you can get on the network, then their affiliates can promote you. Um, but you in most cases I had to put up some kind of prepay. So you might, you might prepay, you know, $2,500 or $3,000. And basically the, um, the network then will use that money as kind of not to say an escrow account, but as like a source for the first bit of commissions on each sale. Um, and after that's kind of gone, then the affiliates will just get paid on commission only. So you'll be invoiced, you know, every two days or once a week, um, for the, for the money and sales um, that that affiliate has sent to you. See, I kind of like that. I won't lie. And um, why I like that they put that up front in is because I think it weans out the scams. It weans exactly. out. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm thrilled to hear um, that's in place. Um, I've been on a, online a while now, uh, a very long while. And what the affiliate marketing was like when I first got online was crazy. It was the wild, wild west and there was like <laughs> there was a lot of scams and mm -hmm. things floating. So um it, it kind of makes me happy that the internet has leveled up to that point where it's like, right, we've got to do something um to wean out these people. Um and then back to your first point um about I suppose working your way into these networks. Um, I tend to think the same is true. Um, I used to do quite a lot of launches. That was something my agency did was help people with launches once upon a time. Mm -hmm. um, and when we did that, what was fascinating is we'd be running ads and you'd be seeing guys uh, on the UTM or on the affiliate leaderboards. And I was like, oh, wow, there are some hitters out there that you just can't <laughs> get. Like there are some people out there that no one knows about. Like there is this insider's club of um I suppose we'll call it uh, internet ballers, if you will. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's a really massive traffic that no yeah. one, no, no one realizes the, like the the opportunity that's there. I completely agree, but I think you just gave away the secret. Like how I worked <laughs> yeah. my way into those networks was events. Exactly. Yeah, getting them, getting meeting them in person, and realizing that you're both real people, right? Like I, I, I think people hide behind a computer and think like. They just like, I, I'm not sure what, what they think, but they just don't realize that like people like working with people that they know, that they've met, that maybe they've hung out with and, and that they're friends with, you know, like it's much easier for somebody to work with you and for you to work with them if you've met them versus like you just kind of cold emailing them five times, you know? Oh, definitely. Well, funnily enough, this podcast is happening because of an event. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I would never have met Esther if I didn't uh, go to some events and be a part of a, a mastermind group in Australia, like it's all, that's how it eventuated. <laughs> that, actually, so it's like, funny, it's the same for me. Like I met Esther at an event. <laughs> so, <there you> go. <laughs> uh, yeah. so all you agency owners out there hiding behind the screen, you know who you are. <laughs> uh, it's time for you to lift your game and get to some events. Exactly. Okay, well, look, that, that's a, a really interesting um, insight and even a big like, I, I think you've just given away like two even how-tos. And I look at this uh, from an agency perspective and like you've mentioned two and a half grand here, but it's like if you're an agency owner and you're working with some big e-commerce sites, 
I dare say that's a like a day's ad spend, a couple of days ad spend. Like oh, that sure. isn't a yeah. huge barrier for some of these big sites or a month's uh, ad spend. Yeah. So so for definitely if you're more established, like there's no reason you shouldn't do it because it's so it's so low barrier, right? But there are a lot of people in the industry who um, they're either brand new or they're just or they're just getting started are also like I think when you're new to business or even in your first few years, there's like that trust factor where it's like they don't want to give a, like like they, they don't want to spend money on ads or, or they, they just assume that like sales should come because they have a great product or like whatever other reason. Um, whereas I found and basically every business I've been uh, that I've been in, um, paid ads are often the quickest way to success. So whether you're paying uh, for everything in a case of say newspaper ads um, or even Facebook or, or whatever it is, or if you're paying upfront for these networks um, just for a little bit of you know early ad spend, um, there's nothing wrong with, with doing that, right? But people, a lot of people who are not that established, they don't, they don't understand that. They don't understand that like you kind of do it like you you know you're in a business like you're gonna have to pay for things. There are, there are expenses and you got to try things and you might you might have to try them and they might even fail, like, um, but th that's part of the process. And like, the quicker you understand that, the quicker it is to success. Yeah, I love that point. I definitely agree with it. There's a mindset shift at some point, though, for most uh, agencies, I would believe, or most e-com stores even, is like they go from this, oh, I don't want to spend, to once they understand that, like, what can they acquire a customer for profitably? It's like, mm -hmm. right, how much can we spend? Exactly. <laughs> There's a switch at some point. Um, Okay, so I've got a couple more questions here that I'm very keen to know and like whatever I expected you were going to say is probably going to be the complete opposite now <laughs> based on this conversation. So I'll start with this one. Um, if you're an agency owner and you're going to start working with an e-commerce brand, um, where should they start? What's the low-hanging fruit or things you want to first look at? I think it depends what exactly your offer is going to be, right? So like... I think it's important a to be kind of finite in your in your program or whatever it is so like i mean yes if you're doing a done for you thing it will take more time but like even that so so we have like our done with you stuff where like we're working with them in these group coaching settings and we have um these video, video modules and trainings that, that they follow along and we also have the done for you um but both both of them based are a 10 week program so like what we found is when you have a finite program time period and a finite program outcome, it makes it much easier to, to, you know, to essentially sell, right? Because like, if you just say, oh, we can help you do this and that, and like, oh, it's like X thousand dollars, whatever it is, there's no finite goal for the user. And there's also no finite time period. So they worry, A, like, what am I even going to get out of this? Um, and B, they worry like, you know, will this go on for nine months? Like, how long do I have to pay this guy? And I'm like, yes, of course you want long-term clients, but at the same time, like, it's much easier to bring someone in on, say, an eight or 10-week program than it is, like, you're going to pay me 3K a month or, for the rest of your life, which isn't the case, but that's the fear that customers have. So um, kind of bring that back together. It's, it's look, like having, having a great outcome, a, a very... Um, a reachable outcome, but one that speaks to that actual end user to make sure they understand that this is the program that will get them from where they are to where they want to be. Um, and B, putting a time period around that so it has, you know, an actual, uh, an actual structure that, that feels okay and makes sense for them to buy into. Interesting. Again, very different from what I expected. Um, I suppose yeah. I'll even ask. A, d a deeper question there it's like i guess you're kind of from my perspective i suppose i'll recap it and confirm we got from there is you're almost saying like try not to be op opportunistic like don't look at where the opportunity is is like bring your strength to what you know how to deliver well in a duration mm -hmm. of time and kind of stick to that so it's like take them through your process and like make sure you're working with clients that you know how to win for rather than go all right well i can see um you're not doing Facebook ads. We should do Facebook ads and creating that into a retainer. Oh, and actually, yeah, that's a better point, which actually you explained better than, than I could. But yeah, like having an actual process, right? So like 
we have guys come to us who say, oh, like I'm doing, like I'm doing, you know, X, Y, Z marketing. What do I do here? And it's like, I might know, I might not know, but the reality is the way we do it is we do it using this marketing method um, and this structure and this process and this type of copy and this type of whatever, because we know it works. We've proven it works. Um, and we're not going to just do whatever, you know, whatever anyone wants, right? We have a, a process that we know can help our clients and that's what we're going to have them do. If they don't want to do that, that's okay. Um, but they're not going to be a fit for us, you know? So. Yeah. I like that a lot. And I think, I, you know, that even loops into what we spoke about earlier about just being careful about, um, as an agency, like getting into things you're probably not uh, suitable to deliver um, or that yeah. you're going to have to learn how to do all this stuff because like, number one, you're not going to uh, be too profitable because of the learning and processes and things you have to develop just to deliver for one client. And two, the client's probably not going to get the best result. So it's like no one's winning in that equation. Yeah, exactly. And, and like on the, on the learning side, it's like if you go in that route, um, I personally believe it's better to just hire an expert to do that in your business and kind of show your clients to work with them versus like telling them you can do Facebook ads and then trying to figure out figure it out on their dime. Like that's not cool. It doesn't help them. It might help you long term, but it's, it's a crappy thing to do to somebody to tell them I can do Facebook ads and then learn, you know, while you're doing theirs. Like you're much better off just having them on board as a client, fine, but hiring somebody who actually knows Facebook ads very well and having them work on that campaign. Um, that's like the best for, you know, for the client, which is what you want long term because happy clients stay with you and say good things about you and so on. So. Yeah, definitely. So I want to I flip that question then. On the reverse of things, like what are the things you see agency owners doing with e-commerce brands that is just the big mistake? Like what are they doing wrong in the e-commerce space? I think one of the biggest things is just pushing traffic, basically pushing ads without any work on the copy or the messaging. Um, like it's, it's not something that I necessarily um, enjoy sometimes, but the reality is like in our programs, we help our clients with everything. Like it's all the copy, then messaging, or all the messaging, then a copy. Uh, then the actual systems, then the ads, and it's all this kind of entire process, right? Whereas you have a lot of these agencies online saying, hey, look, we're going to run Facebook ads to your offer. And the client's like, oh, that's awesome. I'm, I'm going to make so much money. But if a client's copy or website um, is not persuasive or it doesn't help, it doesn't actually convert people, all that traffic goes to a site that sucks. Um, and that's not good for the for the client because they're you know they don't make any sales, and it's not good for the agency either because they're out of business in, in three months from that client, and it's like, it's definitely hard to do because like, you know, if you're an ads agency, um, maybe you don't know copy that well or, or whatever the case is, but like I found that having that kind of holistic perspective on the process, um, and not just only doing one thing without regard to the rest of the funnel and the rest of the website um, is really not the best way to go. Oh, you just hit on the biggest, like, I'm going to say in e-commerce, this is one of my biggest, like, pet peeves at the moment. Um, and I'll, descri I'll describe why. So, first off, I 100% agree. This is huge. Um, and the second part is, like, there's a few layers to this is, like, number one, the number one thing that drives me nuts with e-commerce that stores that are trying to grow is they just use the product descriptions that the brands gave them <laughs> yeah. when they other? I'm like, come on, like what? Uh, yeah, and like, then they wonder why it doesn't try. sell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then in the case when it's their own product, so let's say someone's developed something that only they have, and they're writing their own description, is that they get so focused on the technical nature of the product instead mm -hmm. of the problem it solves. So I'll give an example. Is like let's say we're selling shoes. We're gonna say for for some reason we've invented the new the new Nike, the next Nike, right. <laughs> right? And they get really obsessed with their descriptions and about the, they get obsessed with like you know the colors they've used or the materials mm. they've used or the foam in the shoe instead of like like what someone wants from this is like you know you're gonna look amazing and run faster. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's yeah. Dude, that happens so much, right? <laughs> It's so true. It's uh, like, oh my God, like 
like this is not about like you are the product it's about the benefit to the customer <laughs> like it's like the simplest thing in like marketing and business but people don't get it you know they just, they just don't get it <laughs> oh, it's like people forget that they're the obstacle like even this podcast <laughs> I, i'm real here like no one wants podcasts right they want the result from listening to this podcast yeah right so it's like a huge lesson in we're always the obstacle and in your space especially like uh, in the health space like i'm pretty sure no one wants to take supplements they exactly want- right they, they want that they want to lose weight they want to build muscle they want to exactly they want the end result exactly and that's what i think i mean maybe i've gone off on a tangent here but i think that's that's the huge one obviously you can see i'm passionate about this topic <laughs> <laughs> no, i love it Oh, so, so awesome. Um, I think that's a really interesting perspective and I'm, I'm thrilled um, you brought that up. So um, before we end this show, uh, I wanted to ask uh, just one more thing is like, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, your programs and what you're getting up to and then where people can go to find out more? Yeah, definitely. So um, what we've been doing for, for the most part for the last you know, uh, year plus or so is is working with with health supplement and health e-com brands and helping them to grow the business. And the way we do that is we have um, we basically have these these finite programs. So we, now we have this eight week done with you program, um, and we were doing done for you for a long time. We're kind of starting to phase that out. Um, it's 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 very intensive for 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 us and for me because um, I have like many other companies in this space. It sometimes feels like I'm kind of like doing a funnel for somebody else when I could be doing a front of my own business. So um, basically we're, we're starting to phase out done for you, but we're, we're doing a lot of done with you. Uh, and what that means is we have an eight week program that shows our clients everything from the process of making an amazing product um, to actually building a very strong message and copy around that that speaks to the customer and also position that product in a way that makes sense to the user. Because there's so much... Um, there's so much similar stuff floating around the market and you have to be able to stand out in this market or any market to succeed. Um, so we show them how to do that in terms of the messaging and then their copy. Um, and then we show them what kind of systems to build, which means everything from the tech and the funnels to the fulfillment and the whole operation process. And finally, we show them how to drive traffic to that offer um, in a way that works and scales. So there's a lot to cover in the eight weeks, but it's covered. Um, and then we really help people get their business off the ground um, in a pretty, in a relatively short time period. Like the amount of stuff that we teach them in eight weeks, um, it's intensive for sure. Like it's kind of an eight week boot camp. Um, but it's, it's amazing. We, we had some very nice client success stories out of that. Um, our clients are happy, like they're getting the kind of service and, um, and material that they don't have anywhere else because there are very few people in the industry actually teaching this um, and who actually have done it. Um, there are some others out there that I know of who are not doing that well, but they're teaching it. Um, and that's not cool. So, um, yeah, I mean, our clients are happy. We're happy with it. And that's the kind of main part of our health e-com stuff right now. Um, and we also have done very well in our agency and consultancy as a result of all this. Um, so actually launching an agency based offer this month. That's to show agencies how we basically brought hours, um, to six figures a month in a pretty short amount of time. Um, so basically we have these two core offers that are part of the Stark Media Direct Business. And then, yeah, we have all the other uh, <laughs> supplement offers that we're doing separate of this. Well, I'll tell you what, I have a vote of confidence that uh, anyone who comes and does your programs isn't going to learn the normal rehashed Facebook ads and Shopify site. <laughs> that really, is for sure. really. <laughs> Um, which is great because unfortunately that exists. You can buy a course that is basically rehashed of someone else's uh, experience. Um, and I think what you're talking about is quite unique. Um, I don't think I've ever heard of anyone in the supplements or e-commerce space or health space um, say that ClickFunnels and uh, affiliates or offline is the path they're tackling. So um, <laughs> definitely some unique stuff there. All right, Cyan. So, um, I'll make sure we'll get some links. We'll make sure that if you want to find out more about these things, uh, you can click through and check all this stuff out. I'm going to be checking this stuff out because I'm a little bit fascinated and curious uh, as well. So thank you so much for being on the show today, Sound. Um, and big thank you to Esther if you're listening to this for uh, introducing us. Um, so we'll finish up things from here. Thank you once again.
Yep. Thanks a lot, Charlie. Appreciate it. Thank you.